I never nice. saw good Reinhardt in all my life. I'm not even joking. In my two years playing Overwatch, I never saw Reinhardt carrying this out. Never. <laughs> I'm not joking, I'm not joking. I played in GM, I played in Master, I played every rank. I never saw Reinhardt carrying this out. Never, it never happened. Thanks, my man. Dude, this guy, how do I you shot five people every fight? Hello guys, my name is SVB and I'm back with another video and today I'm bringing you another episode in my Adventures in Solo queue series. In today's installment, we're going to be watching me play my favourite hero, Reinhardt, during the placements for Season 19, mainly because I'm quite sick of the double barrier boar fest. But as you'll see in this video, and as you perhaps heard my flattering teammates suggest, there is still potential for Reinhardt to carry just as hard as he ever did in the days when he was meta. However, there is a time, place, and set of circumstances that allow for it, so in this video I'll take you through why I was able to get so much work done on the hero, why I made the decisions I made, and how you can still pull out the German Crusader in your latter games to good effect. As always, if you see something you like, or learn something new, please do consider like, sharing, or subscribing, but otherwise, let's get to it guys. So in this game, we're going to be playing rather fittingly on Eichenwald, the map where Ryan lost his master and came of age. But we're not going to be leaving anyone behind and we're going to be showing what a fully trained Reinhardt can do. You'll see in a second that right from the first fight we start to bully the enemy team but I want to pause for a second and touch on both teams compositions because this is very key to understanding why my team does so well. Firstly, although the enemy team is running the meta double shield comp Sigma Orisa, they're running it without a Lucio Mora, meaning their healing isn't quite so heavy, doesn't go through barriers and also they are much much slower, making them really vulnerable to being bulldozed upon and we'll be doing a lot of that. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, one of the biggest reasons Reinhardt can just be completely unviable right now is because should the enemy team switch to a Mei, he can quickly become a hard feed. As you'll see in this game, the enemy team never do that and so I'm allowed so much more space. Finally, we have a Doomfist on our side who likes to be very aggressive. Now in my videos, I always talk about how tanks need to make space for their DPS, but sometimes it can work both ways. In this case, the Doomfist will often be the first one to go in, slamming from high up and this distracts the enemy team and allows me to push forward aggressively, thereby creating a problem for the enemy team. In turn, this gives my Doomfist more space to do more damage. On our own, they could easily deal with each of us, but when we're both in their face, they just can't handle the damage. Tell me when they're coming, please. So, okay. the Doom asks for us to call when the enemy team are coming in. They're at the bridge now, they're at the bridge. We do just that and he seismic slams from the high ground. As soon as he lands and draws the attention of the enemy backline, I push their Sigma who suddenly looks very lonely. He gets away for now, but again the Doomfist is going to slam in and I'll push forwards. Each time we do this we're able to get a pick and you can see how quickly I'm building ult. This is indicative of how aggressive I'm allowed to be. Finally, the picks start to add up and we're just able to bulldoze our way forwards. We start to literally spawn camp the enemy team. This shatter here is perhaps a little flashy, but what it does is confirm a solid fight win and allow for a full wipe. When you're pushing this far up, firstly, it's really important that all your team is with you, which is what my team does. But secondly, it's also important to leave nobody alive on the enemy side. Because even one pick when you're in this deep means that your team either has to all die there or full reset because the spawn advantage is so against you and you really don't want to be fighting 5v6. So we decide to back up a little because after all you don't want to get too deep and too carried away because there's always the chance the enemy team could just flank around you. Back, 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 back. Doom left. But as they come in, we push forward with the coalescence this time and bully them again. Oh, nice, nice. Push, push, push. Doom low, doom low. Sigma left, Sigma left, he's low. Now, once again, I see that the Doomfist is meteor striking the Hanzo, Mercy, and Arisa. So while ordinarily you should never charge long distances because you leave yourself very vulnerable to damage, in this case I can afford to do it because the Doomfist is the immediate threat to the team. Unfortunately, the Risa gets punched out of my way, I end up going too deep and I'm ultimately punished for my ambitious charge. Not the best move, 
But this happens if you commit to being disaggressive. Eventually, it will collapse. It's just about how much time you can buy. Now, we wipe and regroup to touch the point again. Okay. Go, go, trace it, trace it, touch. Trace but the key moment, I get punched away and no one else touches, meaning we give up the point for free. You'll notice I still commit the shatter because again, now that we're here, we may as well win this fight. You don't want to be this close to the spawn room and then die for free because you'll end up giving the enemy team so much push without taking any time off the clock. The longer we can keep them here, the better it'll be for us later on. So I tell my team to try and win the fight. Nice, nice, winnable, winnable. We do alright, getting a lot of kills and buying a decent amount of time. But again, this kind of aggression can't last forever and eventually we're forced to hard reset. Now because the enemy team has built an alt advantage, they get the next fight very easily. But as I return from spawn, holding on to shatter, I ask my team the key question, is it worth committing to this fight? I've got shatter, should I use it? Can we touch? Having already lost a couple teammates, this fight could already be over, so I need that extra information. But this is a great spot to hold. Our spawn is so close and theirs is so far, so I do decide to commit the shatter. It's big, but there's no follow up. In hindsight, this is probably a mistake, but sometimes you have to be bold and try and make a play. No, no, just for last point. I'm not even going to go at you. Like a flanker for last point here is. There's no defense with spam. It's not my fault if you guys stay in one with six. I'm not having a you, dude. Relax. Yeah, but I'm not gonna solve this. Just what okay. I'm gonna go. Now my team starts to get a little bit tetchy with minor arguments breaking out about which heroes we should pick. But as always, all you need to do is win a clean fight to get your team back together. So we use the Sigma ult and the Doomfist Meteor Strike to buy us some space. I think the fog is in the. The most you need to die. Go, 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 go in, go in. in lump, lump, lump. Again, this frees me up to charge aggressively and I'm able to get two kills as a consequence. And now that we've stabilized, the fun can really begin. Always in defense, you want to find a good choke to pressure the enemy into and potentially hold them there for the rest of the map. Point C's of payload maps always have this. So I set up shop at the door and start farming shatter and flame strikes with swings on the Orisa. I back up because my shields are low. It's never a good idea to be forced into shattering because your shield is broken. Always decide your shatter timings yourself. But now, here's my chance. Our doom has just punched in aggressively and the enemy sigma has just popped ult. Of course, this is potentially bad for my team, but the key here is that this means that the sigma isn't there to adjust the shield for his team. Playing Ryan against double shield means you have to be doubly aware of the enemy tanks' positioning. It's obviously not easy, and a good Orisa Sigma duo will make you feel like it's impossible. But in solo queue, you will always find windows of opportunity. And here it is. The Orisa shield has just broken, and now it's my time to shine. No fucking way. Huge <laughs> chance, huge chance. You kill one? Yo, yo, the Sigma's gonna finish. Back, 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 back. LOS, LOS. No fucking way. <laughs> if I could aim, I would have hit the McCree with a fire strike here and killed him too, but who needs aim when you've got a big hammer? Now the enemy team switched to Reinhardt coming out of spawn, and again, you have to adapt. You can't play the same way you would have done against Orisa. In reality, this is much better for me though. An easy pin, and an amplified fire strike, and we get another simple fight win. Now here, we're going to see another example of the idea of windows of opportunity, like I mentioned earlier. I can signal them when they come in. Big! I'm on Mercy, Mercy on the left. I got you, bitch. In Overwatch, if you just learn to punish mistakes, I promise you can climb really, really far. So let's look back at why the Shatter lands. First, look at their Reinhardt. He's swinging way too much. One of the most important things with Reinhardt that you should be doing is tracking the enemy Ryan's alt charge. And although that sounds intimidating, it's actually very easy to do with Ryan. Firstly, if you have Shatter and they haven't used theirs, 
9 out of 10 times, they will have it because Reinhardt will almost always trade alt charge. A swing for a swing, a fire strike for a fire strike. Secondly, watch how much they're brawling. If in the last fight, they got a pin and a lot of cleave damage or a big fire strike, then they will ramp up in alt charge. And I did all of those things. So this Ryan is clearly not prepared for me to shatter. If he was, he'd be ready to shield and he'd be trying to bait me into shattering so that he can hold right click and block it. But he's too focused on doing damage. The Sigma's mistake is super easy to spot. He just throws his shield way behind me. So now the alley is lined up for me and all I need to do is land the strike. <laughs> Final fight. They have the entire distance of the bridge to cover, which means we can be aggressive and push out because they have to come through us. They're going to be forced to touch, so almost always they'll have to panic and they'll have to go one by one. And in this chaos, we're able to come out on top because we're the ones in control. We have legs. Behind Reaper, behind Reaper, behind, 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 behind. No race. Let's see rest of the McCree. Thanks. Good. Yeah, it's fine. They're not gonna touch. Good job, guys. Well played. Nice. Jump. Now, it's our turn to attack. We talk about some switches, but my team agrees that their double shield wasn't working for them. We got the better of them almost every time. Not playing Mercy, so it's actually really good. Ryan Zarya, Ryan Zarya. Yeah, they okay, do. Zarya in a bubble? Oh, one, 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 one. Careful if they have them. Now, let me pause here. This is not a good charge. Why? Well, firstly, it's right in front of six enemy players. Any and all of them can pump their damage into me. Secondly, it's a bit far away from my team. I'm going further into their side and further away from mine, making it easier for their Ryan to be supported while making it harder for me to be supported. So why do I do it and why do I get away with it? Because I know I've got my buddy Jakal on Baptiste and when you've played with someone for a long time, you start to develop an understanding of what each other is going to do and you can rely on them to have your back. He drops an immortality field as I charge, meaning that now I can pin without fear. As a result, I make a big opening for my team and we steamroll our way through. Anytime you play Overwatch, having someone in your team who you're stacked with is a big help. But Ryan is one of those heroes that when he's pocketed or enabled, he can absolutely take over a game. I hold the corner as we wait for our next fight. But again, in a Ryan v Ryan matchup, the most important thing is the mental battle. It's the one matchup in Overwatch which is based entirely on anticipation and psyching your opponent out. In a Widow one-on-one, -on -one, you can understand the game as good as an Overwatch League coach, you can have the best positioning, and you can even come out from a surprising flank, but if you can't click the head, you will lose. In a Ryan one-on-one, -on -one, all you need to do is dominate your opponent. And in this case, again, I can see that the enemy Reinhardt isn't prepared for my shatter, because they're swinging way too much and not shielding frequently enough. I drop the hammer, and another opening is made for my team. Any heals? Push them, push them. I need help, I need help. You can, you can. I'm going behind them from the high row, guys. Keep, keep pushing them, keep pushing them. Oh, Kobe! You cope with that area. On your left side, Ash. Uh huh, okay. Left side, left side, guys. Where is she? Is there, is there, is there, is there. Oh, we know, we know. Yeah, yeah. Right there is a quick lesson on why it's important to listen to callouts. Keep pushing them. Oh, Kobe! You cope with that area. On your left side, Ash. Uh huh, okay. Left side, left side, guys. Where is she? Is there, is there, is there, is there. Oh, we know, we know. Got him, got him, got him. Ah, she's a shield. You can go crazy, I got the. Okay, I'm going in. Okay, I'm done. Again, listen to the call from my ah, friend Jakal. Go crazy. I got the okay. I'm Again, good. we know our combo. I charge forwards aggressively and he protects me with the lamp behind. The enemy team can't focus both. If they focus me, the lamp will keep me alive. If they focus the lamp, I'll swing through them and do a ton of work. Not to mention, my gigantic body makes it rather hard to hit the lamp. So once again, my team is able to dominate the space on the map and the fight as a result. Now here, I get a bit lucky. I fail to follow my own advice. Caught up in my own hype, I've forgotten to track the enemy Ryan's ult, and he actually starts the shatter animation while I'm fire striking. This is another rule of the Ryan v Ryan. Never fire strike when you know they have shatter up. Why? Because unlike your swing animation, your fire strike animation cannot be cancelled, meaning that even if you react to the shatter in time, 
it will take too long for your shield to come up and you won't be able to block it. However, if you notice, the Rhine actually gets knocked back ever so slightly, buying me time to block the Shatter, at least for myself, if not for my Batiste to the side. You're good, you're good. Healing, healing, healing. The pale is just behind us. Uh, I'll take him with me. Final fight. Let's wrap this up nice and quick. I force immortality feel? Yeah, this right out! Oh, GG guys. <laughs> oh my goodness! 1v6 against the Dome 3 9 is. I never nice. saw good Reinhardt in all my life. I'm not even joking. In my two years playing Overwatch, I never saw Reinhardt carrying this out. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, I'm not joking. I played in GM, I played in Master, I played every rank. I never saw Reinhardt carrying this out. Never! It never happened. Thanks, my man. Dude, this guy. How do you shot at five people every fight? So there you have it guys, hopefully you fellow Ryan players like myself will feel a little better about the odds of playing Ryan successfully in this meta after watching this video. Honestly, I'm also scared quite often to pick him because of how easily he gets countered. However, if you play according to the players in your lobby and not necessarily the meta, you can still be successful. I mean, when even Thanos is praising you, you know you've played like a true Iron Man. So let's just do a quick recap of why I was able to be successful in that game. It's less to do with me being some sort of Ryan God and more to do with the circumstances of the game and identifying these is what will help you do the same. Like I said, their first mistake is that they didn't pick Mei. Secondly, they didn't ever put a lot of damage from behind their shields, meaning I was able to walk up to them consistently. They switched from Orisa to Ryan, but instead if they put a Roadhog in there and started right clicking into my shields, it would have put too much pressure and made it hard for me to be as aggressive as I was. But they were hung up on the double barriers all through their attack and ultimately, they went to waste because we were able to just walk past them. Finally, play to your teammates. I was able to use the Doomfist as a space maker for me to walk in, and in turn, when I followed up his entry with my aggression, it became too strong a combo for the enemy team to deal with. And you can see how quickly I was able to farm up Shatter from the cleave damage I was doing. But that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you found this video helpful. And as always, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons who do the awesome job of supporting me. If you want to see more content like this, then please do consider signing up. Otherwise, I'll be back next week with another video. See you guys soon.